How's it going, everybody? Uh, my name is Jessica. I'm the principal QA for the World vs. World team. And I am Tyler Bierce. I'm a game designer on the World vs. World team. And today we're going to give you a sneak peek of a upcoming World vs. World map called The Edge of the Mists. Um, this is a, a new map that's pretty unique from existing World vs. World maps, although there are a lot of similarities. Um, but one of the main goals for this map is to offer players um, something they can do that's similar to World vs. World, maybe um, acclimates them to World vs. World if they're new to it, uh, continue to progress their player uh, while they wait perhaps to queue for existing World vs. World maps. Um, this map, when it becomes full, it will just infinitely create other instances of the map, so you will always be able to get into this map at any time. Um, a couple similarities for this map and existing Wavua maps. Uh, you'll still be placing Siege, that's pretty crucial to, to World vs. World gameplay. Um, there will be various objectives uh, that you'll need to capture, and it will affect your score in the overflow, or I'm sorry, the, the Edge of the Mist map. However, a big difference is this will not contribute to the points per tick in the existing World vs. World maps. Um, this was a very important decision we made to prevent uh, servers that have you know, a higher population than, than other worlds. We don't want to give them an advantage if they can just continuously fill up these Edge of the Mist maps and then you know, gain a, a lot of score that way. So it's pretty important that we don't have the score contribute in that sense. Um, another uh, unique thing about this map as compared to existing World vs. World maps, all the objectives are, are very different in, in the gameplay sense, the mechanics, and the creatures that we've implemented. So currently Tyler is fighting a Grawl um, blood letter. This is at, are you at a resource camp? Yes. Yeah. So this is at a resource camp in the jungle sector. Um, so the three sectors of the map will have um, unique creatures. Each objective will be different, and we'll kind of go over those uh, momentarily. Are you going to die? No. Are you going to kill him? I'm way too strong to lose to a grab okay. on leather. Um, when you're done with that, do you want to bring up the map and we can go over yeah. some of the objectives? So these objective uh, guys right now, we're aiming for them to... Uh, well, specifically the resource camps are uh, aimed for a, a solo player that's really good um, or a couple players. Um, so that's sort of our solo content for the moment. Um, certainly as we get the uh, guilds in to playtest this, uh, we'll tweak uh, the individual objective balance. Yep, that's uh, another really exciting thing about this map. Um, we are introducing our first public test group. So we've been accepting um, hundreds and hundreds of guilds in, into this to participate. Um, hopefully in the very near future we will kick off some of our first play sessions and we're looking forward to getting really good feedback um, about the map, about the gameplay, the balance, uh, all that good stuff. So I'm just going to capture this uh, uh, resource camp. Uh, it's going to get us act access to this reactor and we'll be able to build generators uh, next to it. Yep, that's another difference with this map. Um, you may all be accustomed to supply doliacs in the existing world versus world maps. Um, you will generate supply in a slightly different sense on the edge of the mists. Uh, basically you'll build up these generators to complete the reactor uh, and that will generate supply ticks to your keep. So there won't be um, Doliax for the enemy to kill and cut off your supply, but you will be able to come in, take this resource camp, uh, break down the generators, and cut off people's supply in that, in that form. Uh, so to give you a general overview, this is, this is kind of what the map looks like. Uh, we have a, an Arctic sector, and that's, that's that. There, in each uh, individual sector, there will be a keep, um, there will be two resource camps, a tower, and then three unique objectives. Um, for the Arctic sector, we have a shrine, a bell tower, and a forge. Um, and at each of these objectives, there will be unique bonuses you can earn for your team for, for capturing them. Um, and then in the desert sector, we have a similar setup. There's a keep, two resource camps, a tower, and then three unique objectives. 
here we have um, the jungle sector, uh, which Tyler was just demonstrating, one of the enemies at the resource camp. Um, we have an altar, a statuary, an observatory, um, and again, unique bonuses and gameplay at each of those, um, which is really, you know, it, it's, it's a new approach we're taking to um, building out this world versus world map. Uh, so we look forward to getting feedback on how that feels as opposed to the existing maps where currently, you know, the guards and, and the lords are pretty similar at each objective. So it's, it's been really fun to um, get these all designed and, you know, have a theme and, and what have you. Uh, so Tyler's going to take us, where are you taking us? Somewhere in the Arctic? Yeah. Gonna fight a bear zerker. So the, the creature theme in the Arctic will be Kodan, and um, each enemy at each objective is different and has you know, a different skill palette. So I think it'll be really interesting as you go through this map and um, try to capture all the areas for your world. Um, most of these, as Tyler mentioned, most of these fights are, are designed for about three to five people, but I think this is one of the ones that would be a solo mission. Oh, maybe oh, no. not. Oh no, he's so hard. Yeah. Man, I hope a dev doesn't come here and kill him. That was convenient. Um, let's see. Do you want to go to one of the objectives? Yeah, and I can sure. kind of describe something. So go over to the altar. Sure. Um, so to give you just a, I'm not sure we'll have time to go over every objective and all the unique mechanics and bonuses. Um, but the altar, uh, this is uh, in the jungle sector. And basically, you'll need to defeat this uh, air elemental which Tyler is, is in, in progress. Um, once you defeat him, there will be a capture point. Uh, once you hold that capture point, you will control the altar and there will be uh, like a bonus event sort of thing where you need to bring um, elementals to the altar to charge it. And you will get a, I think right now we're looking at um, a player-based uh, buff that would, well, not necessarily a buff, but a new skill that would allow you to jump a greater distance. Um, but just to remind you, this is all still being developed and pending you know, feedback we get in our play sessions, a lot of this is subject to change. So this is just the current iteration. All right, we'll go to a different objective. Yeah. Um, go to the statuary. Uh, the statuary is kind of similar. There will be an enemy that you defeat and you control the capture point to to own the objective. This is actually a commune location. Oh, my bad. Um, so once you defeat this, this Grawl, you will commune with the statue. And the idea is uh, players will be able to um, interact with the statue and use it as kind of a giant stationary siege weapon, which sounds really awesome to me. I think one of the, the really well, the thing that's going to draw me to this map, I think, is all the unique fights that you'll encounter. Um, each each location, me. yeah, this guy has some crazy mechanics. Um, but yeah, each you, each location is themed and unique and has a different enemy. Um, they're they're going to be really fun to fight, I think, and very challenging. So. I don't know if you're going to be able to kill him. Let's check out the observatory. I am pretty amazing at this game. So the observatory is also in the jungle sector. And there will be um, an enemy on each capture point, three capture points total. Once you own all three, um, you will have access to purchase uh, sentry turrets, which will allow you to, well, basically, you'll place them um, you know, in, in, around the map, and you'll be able to see enemies um, nearby those turrets, which is a pretty neat mechanic to um, kind of alert your team if, if another enemy force is coming through. 
you might be able to spot a Zerg and then get back to your objective to defend it before oh, they no. can... Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, oh. Here's another really unique um, feature of this map. Falling off the edge of the mists is very punishing. You, you will die. So try to avoid that once you guys get into this map. These are the uh, enemies, well, they're not enemies right now because you own this keep, but these are the keep defenders. Um, they're pretty punishing, so if you try to take, as Tyler will demonstrate, if you try to come in here and take this keep, uh, you have your work cut out for you. Yeah, so in this fight, uh, there's two elementals that you need to hide away from themselves, otherwise they get a permanent missile reflection and really high damage absorption. Uh, you can't really fight the Grawl until uh, the elementals are dead. Uh, and he constantly turns you into a rabbit. Uh, Which is awesome, by the way. <laughs> Let's see. Check out the desert keep. Uh, Cannot map travel while in combat. Cheating. Still in combat. So just to reiterate, one of the main goals uh, the World vs. World team has for implementing a map like this um, is to is offer players something to do. Um, you know, when they're waiting possibly to get into Eternal Battlegrounds on after a reset, during prime time, what have you. Um, or just any time you want to come in here and, and check out the awesome environment art, the really badass creatures that we've implemented, um, and all the, the unique objectives. I think that, you know, you could spend a lot of time in here and, and enjoy yourself, but if you you still want to um, help your world win during seasons. Uh, you'll still need to go into the existing world versus world maps to get that score. So this guy lays down fire fields um, that block projectiles with the smoke, and he places a bunch of turrets that will net you in the fire fields or suck you into them. There's uh, vacuum turrets. Uh, and he has a healing turret that he puts down to cleanse Condies off of himself. Pretty handily. Um, so one of the questions in chat uh, is asking about the, all the objectives and the ideas behind them, and whether there is a flow in all of them. Um, we, we've tried to be consistent in the themes for each sector, so. Enemies you fight in the Arctic are going to, you know, be kind of typical of what you might expect to encounter in the Arctic, um, as well as the jungle and in the desert. Um, but as far as uh, a flow for them all working together, these are kind of the idea of this map is it's, um, you know, islands that are broken up and, and connected by bridges. So they're they're very much different from each other, but they're connected. Um, by these, you know, land bridges. There are also buildable bridges, which is a new, unique thing we've added to this map. Uh, and hopefully, depending on how well it's received, we might be able to incorporate it into existing world versus world maps. But you will be able to destroy these bridges as well. So it'll offer new gameplay in the sense that you could cut off enemies and create choke points and things like that. Uh, Tyler is fighting one of the tower bosses. Um, this is a giant basilisk, oh, and no. oh, it is no. kicking your ass. Again, these these enemies aren't designed to be, you know, soloable. So specifically Just like, the the tower ones. Yeah, they are elites. Uh, here's another tower boss. This one is kind of closer to the Arctic sector, so to follow in that theme, we have a giant owl griffin. Um, this is a really cool fight uh, because this boss has two stances, so when he's in the air, you can't really attack him, so you need to keep him from going up into the air. 
um, which is kind of an interesting mechanic. So he swoops every once in a while, and that's the only time his buff falls off that lets you, if you stun him during that time, he'll, uh, he'll enter his ground stance, and that's the only time you can actually really damage him. Uh, I don't actually have a stun in this build, so he's just going to be unkillable for me. Escape him. Let's see, what else do we have to show off? Yeah, do you want to kind of just walk through some of the, the map to show off how pretty it is? Sure. Yeah, our environment artist did a fantastic job. It's, it is really breathtaking in here. Um, so this is, this is in the, uh, the jungle sector. Again, you'll encounter kind of themed creatures, mostly uh, trolls and, and growl. Are they, these are just the defenders outside yeah. your keep? These are the guards outside of the Lost City keep. Yeah. So similar to World vs. World, there'll be, you know, guards at the, at the gate, guards on the wall, and then guards that patrol. And at each of these keeps in each sector, um, there'll be, well, like I said, growl, Code in ogres, depending on the on the area. Are you gonna take all of these guys? Yeah, it's high roll. I believe in you. Oh, that was unfortunate. That's a fail. Right, they won. They won this right. time, trolls. We'll come back with with a more organized party next time. <laughs> um, so, as Tyler walks around, you can kind of see a little bit more of the map. Um, it's crossing a bridge, going to the lower part of the, the jungle sector. And if he keeps going south, uh, he can either go southeast or southwest and enter the desert or arctic sectors. Um, and as I mentioned a little bit earlier, there will be, um, well, there will be bridges that you can't blow up. So there will never be a scenario where you just cannot access a certain area of the map. Um, however, there will be various spots where you can build them up or destroy them. Um, and that'll, that'll make for some interesting strategy on the battlefield. Uh, if you're running with a large group of players and your plan is to go across one bridge and then you find that it was destroyed, you will have to rethink things and maybe go to another, another route. The resource camps in each region are defended by a different type of creature. Uh, the Grawl Bloodletter was defending the Lost City one. Uh, in the case of the Arctic region, we have Vice Elementals. Uh, that was a super fail. Uh, this guy has a range prote projectile attack. Uh, it actually is more punishing the further away you are. Um, Periodically, he'll blow people back if they're too close to him, and then he will chill everyone at range. So that, and then he chills me. So something I mentioned earlier about uh, earning score in this map, but not having it translate to your score in the existing maps. Um, Another unique aspect of the Edge of the Mists, matches will be drastically shorter than what you're currently used to in World vs. World. Um, we haven't determined you know, a, an exact time yet. Uh, we're probably gonna base it off of feedback from our, our play sessions. Um, but to give you an idea, think in terms of hours for a match um, as opposed to you know, a week long. So. Right now, you're fighting, which objective are you at? Uh, I'm fighting an ogre brawler. Oh, at the resource at camp? the desert resource camp. Yep. So again, um, it's a similar scenario where there's an enemy and, and a capture point, and then you have to build up the generators. Um, but the, the enemy you fight is, is unique to the theme of that sector. And this will be one of the, the areas that you could potentially solo uh, for a skilled player. 
Um, we haven't determined yet if we're going to be consistent with existing WOVWA maps in the sense of um, uh, implementing sentry points. So that's something else that will probably come from feedback from our play sessions to give, you know, solo solo players or people who want to roam more to do. Success. Um, do you want to run around the Arctic a bit? We haven't shown much of that. Mm, let's see. Go down here, I think. Um, another interesting mechanic with these objectives and the Edge of the Mists, the more objectives you own uh, near your, your keep, um, the greater bonus you'll receive. So a good example of this um, something we're playing around with for the Arctic area. If you own one objective and also the keep, there's a, a snowstorm that will damage enemy invaders. Um, however, since you own the keep, you will have a, co a Coden's fire buff, so you're impervious to the damage from the snowstorm. And then the more objectives you own in this area, the more severe this blizzard becomes. Um, so. It, it adds really interesting gameplay in the sense that enemies will always be taking periodic damage, um, but it also uh, kind of obscures your vision a bit if you can imagine a really severe blizzard. So that'll make fighting really interesting. Uh, also with the added um, threat of falling off the edge, uh, I think that will make for some really, really interesting fights. Um, these are some of the, the wall defenders. So again, um, each, each area and each objective has kind of the same layout as far as, um, you know, having the standard defenders, but the thing that's really unique is having the themes, having them be, you know, different. Um, each of them are different. Each of them have different skill palettes and uh, kind of spices things up, adds a little more flavor. Uh, one of the questions in chat, do you get world versus world experience from this map? Absolutely. Um, this, since you're not contributing to your score in world versus world, uh, we still want you to be able to progress in the sense of well, that you would in in world versus world gameplay. So this, there will be uh, WXP tied to all the objectives, killing players, killing NPCs, everything standard that you're used to in the existing world versus world maps and you will be able to continue to rank up in this map as well. So um, a good way to look at it, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, if you're new to World vs. World and you want to get acclimated um, but maybe aren't ready to jump into to the existing Eternal Battlegrounds or Borderlands maps, um, or you know, if, if you're one of those maps is full and, and you are waiting to get in, this will be a really good option to keep keep experiencing World vs. World gameplay uh, with a unique spin, and then also continue to progress your, your character in World vs. World while you wait, or while you choose. Um, you will be able to join this map at any time, so uh, you may have noticed when we entered at the beginning, when you go to the World vs. World panel, uh, in the Enter World vs. World drop-down, that's how you can hop into here anytime you like. Uh, another question in chat, what happens if you lose your keep? Well, you got to get it back. Um, you've, you very well could lose your keep. Uh, it happens all the time in the existing World vs. World maps. Um, there will be safe waypoints, however, um, because obviously if, if... Here's a good example in the jungle sector. If you don't own your keep, you might wonder, oh, if I die, where do, where do I go? So there will be um, safe waypoints for each team. So. In the unfortunate event that you do leap, uh, do not fret. You'll still be able to spawn and get back into the fight. Ah, here's an example of a safe waypoint. Uh, you'll teleport into kind of an airship. Um, and then you can get back in. Um, another question in chat, will there be world completion? Uh, at this time, we are not planning to add additional points of interest, vistas, and, and things like that. So 
we currently um, are not planning for this to add to world completion. Can we give them a, a little taste of, of the desert a bit? Sure. So this is one of the objectives um, in the desert sector. It is an airport. You will fight this balloon pilot, and um, once you defeat him, he will be persuaded to, to work with you. And uh, currently we're thinking the bonus for this objective would be the ability to call down airstrikes, which would be pretty awesome. Do we have any of the bridges built up that we could destroy? I don't think we do. Uh, Just to kind of give them an example. Not sure. Um, another question that's come in from the chat. Can you progress your meta on this map? Absolutely. Um, as we continue with seasons and implement additional achievements, um, killing guards in the Edge of the Mists will be the same as killing guards in the existing World vs. World maps. Uh, another question, are there jumping puzzles? Um, there are none implemented yet. That's not to say that we may consider putting one in. Um, the whole map is kind of gives you kind of a jumping puzzle sense, but uh, I think it, it might be neat if we did have an area that was a little more treacherous than the main terrain. So that's something that we will, we will consider for the, the future. Um, another question on chat. Can guilds parties join one another in the Edge of the Mists when they get into different overflows? So um, similar to how, it's, how it functions currently in in World vs. World and the rest of Guild Wars 2, um, parties can, can enter instances together or maps together. Um, as far as getting an entire guild in the same map, that would be a little more tricky uh, because you don't get to choose which overflow map, or I'm, I'm sorry, which edge of the, the mist map you get to go into. So basically, there will be uh, an instance of the map, and once that becomes full, another instance of that map will spin up. So while it will be, you know, fairly easy to get in with your party, um, it might be a little more complicated to try to get in the same map with, with your guild. Is this, this is kind of the center of the map, right? Uh, yeah, this is sort of the underneath area. Um. Yeah, so another really awesome uh, feature you can kind of stealthily travel through uh, through the center of the map to the various sectors underneath. There are tons of bridges and and ways to to traverse, you know, the the broken up islands. So uh, mobility in the map is definitely new and different from existing World versus World, and uh, we're pretty excited about it and looking forward to hearing your guys' feedback. So yeah, as you can see, this is a really good angle. Th this map is really just comprised of a bunch of broken up floating islands. Um, so another question in chat, is there any incentive or rewards for a server to win an Edge of the Mist match like World vs. World bonus chest, world experience, etc.? cetera? Um, absolutely, we will most likely be implementing new achievements for this map. Um, we also want to implement uh, greater stat tracking and um, there will definitely be uh, well, the ability to win, win a matchup here. It will not contribute to your existing World vs. World score, but there will be winning in the sense of your, your world owned the most objectives. We haven't um, necessarily determined how we're going to decide on that, on, on whether someone wins. Um, it may be that you own the most objectives at the end of the matchup, or um, a similar system to existing World versus World where you get you know, points per objective. Um, 
So that's something we're still developing. Uh, but there will definitely be rewards and, and things tied to that. So Go over to the leaning area. Yeah, so this is um, also part, kind of part of the center of the map where it connects to the desert, or I'm sorry, the Arctic region. Um, really, it's just, this map is, is very gorgeous. So we really look forward to getting um, the public test group in here and uh, getting feedback and very excited to, to ship this. So. I think that about wraps up all we had to show for this sneak peek. Um, yep. Um, we will be obviously talking about this a great deal on the forums. Um, as we mentioned, there will be a, a public test session kicking off in the near future. Uh, it's possible that some of your guildmates are participating in it, so I'm sure you'll be hearing a lot more about this map in, in the coming coming weeks. Uh, be sure to follow our channel, and uh, thank you for tuning in and, and getting a sneak peek of The Edge of the Mists, brought to you by World vs. World. Thanks, everyone.